Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna be discuss- Today we'll be talking about- Today we'll be talking about some steps into- Today we'll be talking about- What are we talking about today? Today we'll be talking about how to create a beautiful and prosperous 2024. I am not a manifestation guru. I'm not a lifestyle coach or any of that. But in the last leg of 2023, I have been researching manifestation, positive thinking, the law of attraction. And so these are the steps I'm taking to have a prosperous- 2024. So if you're a newbie like me, then this is the video for you. Number one, reflection and redirection. I reflected on my past years, not only 2023, but the years before. So what did I did wrong? What did I did right? What were my patterns that would lead me nowhere, that would lead me in circles? I have a video on the mistakes that I made in 2023. And if you'd like to watch that, I will link it up here. Look back into your previous year. Look at the highlights. Look at the lowlights. What are the things that you did last year that made you proud? Your accomplishments, the challenges that you faced, all of these got you to where you were today. Now, recognize the things that you wish you did, the things that you wish you accomplished but didn't. Reflect on your failure. It's okay to fail. Failure builds character and makes you a stronger person and a more wise person. All of the people who have succeeded today have failed at some point in their lives and just because you're in that point in your life doesn't mean you're never getting to where you want to go. Recognize the things that you wish you did but didn't. Were you lazy? Were you not motivated? Were you not in a good headspace? Were you sick? And what can you do now to address those issues so that you don't have to make the same mistakes? And if you make the same mistakes in the future, at least you've come at it with experience and you know how to handle the situation. So stepping into 2024, I'm trying to make a vision of my life for myself and focus on my goals, my short-term goals, my middle-term goals, and my long-term goals. My short-term goals are like the now. What can I achieve today? How can I make today beautiful? What can I achieve in one week? What am I doing at work tomorrow? I'm not focusing on the future so much as the present. It could be going to the gym this morning. Or it could be filming today. My middle-term goals are more what I can achieve in a short time span. For example, building good habits. I want to build a good habit around the gym. I want to go to the gym more often and more frequently. So I'm manifesting that for myself. Speak in present tense. I frequently go to the gym. Acknowledge that this is you currently and your mind will work around that. And it's like you're almost tricking your mind, making your mind think, oh yeah, I, I do go to the gym all the time. What I do right now to make me more encouraged to go to the gym is I write down on my phone the days that I go to the gym. What did I do? And then after the gym, I would buy a matcha for myself. I would go to the library. No, I never go to the library. I would go to the coffee shop or I would gift myself something that kind of tricks me into thinking if I do go to the gym, then I'm gonna get a reward. It's like you're training a cat or a dog. If you want them to sit, give them a little reward and they'll associate sitting with a reward. So that's how you can build good habits. And I'm just starting to try this out for myself and so far it's working. And for your long-term goals, you have to figure out what is the career you want? What is the life that you want? How do you envision yourself in that life? For example, if it requires some sort of professional education, work towards that because you know you'll need it. Or if it requires some sort of consistency, for example, with YouTube, you know you'll have to work on that. Number two, cleansing an organization. So this is in different categories. It doesn't have to be only your environment, but also in your mind. For example, for me, I did a social media purge recently because I recognized that these things that distract me from reaching the goals that I want to reach is not healthy for me. It brings me down. So I try to internalize what are the things, what are the factors that is making me feel jealous, that is making me feel inferior or less than of myself. I realized coming out of social media, I don't feel better. I feel worse. And why did I feel worse? It's because I see these influencers flaunting their wealth. I see these influencers wearing these clothes that I wish I could wear or feel confident wearing. And so what I did was I unfollowed certain influencers and it doesn't mean that I'm not supporting them. It's just I'm focusing on myself and supporting myself first. And instead of just unfollowing people left and right, I also looked into following more positive thinking influencers or people who talk about manifestation, people who talk about meditation. And so now, social media isn't as toxic as it once was. Cleansing an organization involves your surroundings as well. If you have a clean bedroom, for example, you'll feel more productive or you'll be able to work in a better mindset. I always have a dirty room. You can almost never see the floor. And so coming into 2024, I want to try to build good habits. If I come home from work and I change, all those clothes, 
immediately in the bin and not on the floor. As soon as you think, you do. Number three is financial responsibility. Oh, this is hard. When I lived in the Philippines, I had to work, do overtime, pay my bills, pay my rent, and then find time to pay for things for my YouTube channel, which is makeup mostly. A lot of people were telling me that this is a waste of money. I was able to get res I was able to get the sub I was able to get the subs <laughs> But then I was able to get the required subscribers for that AdSense. And for me it was not a waste because I love doing it. Now it's time to enter the financial responsible adult that I should be. Right now I'm focusing on my debts, my bills, paying for insurance. I want to learn about the stock market. I want to learn how to invest. If you live in Canada, learn about RRSP, TFSA, FHSA. All of these things I want to learn in this year. Number four, schedule activities in advance. Moving into 2024, I want to be able to do more things. Because I think when I moved to Canada, the culture was so different. Everything was so different. My family was away. And honestly, I've been feeling so homesick this past few months. It's really playing with my mind. It makes me feel so sad. And I just don't feel like doing anything. And so 2024, before I say, nah, I don't want to do anything, I'm going to book things in my calendar while I'm in a good headspace. So that, let's say, three months from now, I get a ding on my calendar. I'm like, oh, I blocked this day so that I can do something. Thing. If you find yourself in a good headspace to do certain things, like for example, research some activities in your area, put them in your calendar, be it pottery, be it painting, be it sculpting, be it a dip in the pool or a visit to the water park. Bring yourself on a solo date. I do this usually on my birthday. Put it in your calendar, just randomly in your calendar, that you're going to have dinner with yourself at this restaurant or you're going to watch a movie, any kind of movie by yourself. Number five, being kind to yourself. I struggle a lot with discipline. I always find an excuse in my mind to not do something even if I'm supposed to do it. Like for example, filming today. I really did not want to do it. I was pushing it back and back and back and back. I could have done this earlier, but I didn't because I was not feeling it. I was like, you know what? Just put the makeup on. J just put the makeup on plug everything in just just do that and as soon as i build that momentum i found myself filming it's important to be kind to yourself don't push yourself too hard but also don't allow yourself to slack off so much you have to listen to your body you also have to encourage yourself to do things especially if you want to build good habits be consistent take care of your body being kind to yourself also involves you supporting your body and making it healthy and taking care of yourself mentally if you're in a negative headspace all the time it might be good to look into therapy if you feel weak all the time maybe look into drinking more water buy a water bottle with those like little ridges that dictate how much you should have been drinking at 9 a.m 10 a.m 11 take vitamins I bought these pill organizers from Sunday to Saturday it's got four compartments a.m p.m evening bedtime so find creative ways to build good habits that will aid in pampering yourself and taking care of yourself. One good advice is a skincare routine. Every night when you come back home and you're tired from work, build a skincare routine and just close the bathroom door and just stay there for like 15, 30 minutes. I don't know how long it takes for you to do your skincare, but don't rush. Play some music or play a nice calming video and just enjoy it and just live in that moment. I started doing this very recently and it's really, really helped me sleep well at night. Another way to be kind to yourself is to hang around people who you feel comfortable with. Number six, building good habits, which I've always been mentioning in this whole video. They say it takes 21 days to build a habit and I believe that is true because I remember when I was in the Philippines, I would go every single day to the gym for 21 days and I didn't realize that it was over 21 days and my body was yearning to go to the gym just try to listen to yourself and see if the 21 day doesn't work maybe try something else there are many ways to build habits and if you really want to you can find a way for yourself another way to build good habits is something i thought of called hire yourself so i have a full-time job i want a part-time job to get more money but at the same time i don't want to work for somebody else and I want to build my content. But how am I going to do that if I have no time because I'm working for everybody else? So hiring myself means in place of a second job, I'm going to be working on my YouTube channel, for example, as my second job. 
So if I have to work 20 hours a week as a part-time job, I'm going to spend those 20 hours working for myself. There you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed and found this helpful in any way. If you have any tips and tricks and suggestions about how to step into 2024 head on with as much productivity and positive thinking as you can, please don't forget to leave it in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be informed when I upload. Thank you so much for your support and I very much appreciate it. Bye!